Hello everybody and welcome to this video looking at the very fanservice-y but incredibly enjoyable Kotodama The Seven Mysteries of Fujisawa. This game comes to us from P-Cube and if you're not familiar with who P-Cube are, they're a UK based publisher that really specializes in bringing games to us that nobody else would really touch. And their specialty, I guess, if you were to narrow one particular theme across a lot of their games, it would be that their games are full of fan service. So they were responsible for bringing us Galgun and its sequel, those uh, very fan service on rail shooters. Uh, they've also brought Song of Memories, which was a fan service visual novel that was released earlier in the year. They brought us Punchline the year before, which was also very fan service in nature. They do a lot of stuff that isn't fan service as well. <laughs> They've got Root Letter coming later on in the year, and they were the company that was really responsible for getting Steinsgate off the ground back before Spark Chunsoft had its own English publishing house and um, PR companies and all that kind of stuff. So P-Cube has been around for quite a while. They've done some great things things in the industry and this game Kotodama is an interesting one for them because it's the first time that they've actually created a game from scratch so rather than just find a game in Japan localize it and then put the marketing and PR resources behind it this is the first time that they've actually been involved with the actual development of the game so I can only imagine how nervous they must be getting this out because you know this is this is another step up for the company this is something that they put a lot of their heart and soul into and kind of defines them I guess as a company in a lot of ways. The good news for P-Cube is that Kotodama is actually a really good game. It's not going to change your perceptions of the world, it's not going to make you question things, it's not the deepest work of art out there. It must be said, it's not... It, it, in fairness, I don't think the developers really wanted it to be. They were clearly aiming for this to be something that is very light-hearted, entertaining, silly and fun. And on all of those levels, they've really achieved that. I think this is a great little game. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. It's not going to be a Game of the Year winner, but it, again, it doesn't really try to be. It's more about having fan service fun, and they've achieved that. So, let's have a quick chat about what makes Kotodama so enjoyable. Kotodama is a blend of visual novel and a puzzle game. Now, the visual novel side of things is not the most interesting stuff to record. It doesn't make a great visual content for a video such as this. So the bit that you saw before, that's the only bit of that I'm going to play through this video. But it works very much like any other visual novel you may have played. You sit there and you read through an awful lot of text of characters talking back and forth and you play as one character who has a couple of internal monologues to help drive the story forward as well. The visual novel side of things is actually quite interesting um, and it does it goes places that I didn't really expect it would going into it. So what I thought when I first started to play Kotodama is that it was going to be a very fan service uh, visual novel with a lot of silly humor in it. There are moments in this where the themes go shockingly dark <laughs> to be honest um, and I don't want to give too much away but I think I can safely talk about the first example of this so in Kotodama because it's the seven mysteries of Fujisawa there are kind of seven different strands of plot line to follow each one is like a little self-contained story about a character and some kind of situation that they're in and your job is to figure out the truth behind that mystery that's why the game's named the way it is. So the first of those little stories involves a character who absolutely loves animals, but for reasons also uh, abuses them, <laughs> which is quite shocking. And uh, while it's not visually represented on the screen, just reading through the text kind of shook me a little bit, especially since I'm a big fan of animals myself. So I did not expect that going in, especially since this is done in the context of a mini game where you're also stripping that character down to her underwear. But um, yeah, Kotodama does go to some pretty dark places and it does engage with some pretty dark themes. It doesn't do it on a very deep level, it must be said, but it does enough to suggest, well, to keep you interested, really. It's That's what it's there for. It does enough to make you want to play on and find out what the next mystery is and just see what kind of messed up situations the game goes into. That is, of course, uh, mixed in with an awful lot of humor. This game does deliver on that nonsense that it promised from the visuals but 
yeah, I, I guess the best way to really describe it is that it's not really what I expected going in. And I mean that in a good way, it actually impresses me with some of the places it goes, some of the ideas it touches on, and some of the deeper themes that it does engage with on a very light level, just enough to be intriguing without it getting too dark and dense. The other part of Kotodama, and the more relevant part as far as the gameplay goes, I guess, is the puzzle sections. Now, the puzzle sections are explained in-game as your character's ability to dive into the subconscious of the other characters. So, in the visual novel section of the game, these characters are all lying to you. And then by diving into their brains, <laughs> effectively, and beating them at this puzzle thing, uh, you're able to force them to tell the truth and that's how you progress the story and all of that kind of thing so those puzzle games work out like a pretty standard match three formula uh, there's some slight differences so in this one when you pr pick an icon rather than make the icon disappear or be able to move the icon the icon shifts to the top row of the puzzle board and all the other icons above it drop down and you need to do the same thing as you would in any uh, match three game uh, by lining those icons up so that you can make them disappear and then other ones will cascade down and you can set up big combos and all that kind of stuff from there. So that slight shift in how you have to look at the puzzle board is interesting. As somebody who's played an awful lot of match three puzzlers, it was nice to have something that is slightly different or something I haven't played at least in the past. Uh, and it did take me a couple of turns or a couple of puzzles to wrap my head around the, the, different, um, the different way that icons move around the board and how that affects how you can match icons up and all that kind of stuff. It's not too high pressure, it must be said. This game is a game that wants to be finished. <laughs> so I never really had the game over screen as an issue and... Um, by the time I'd done a couple of these puzzle boards, I was actually able to clear them pretty quickly. This game doesn't try too hard to, to challenge you, and uh, it won't be seen as very frustrating to people who don't play too many puzzle games as a result. So that's the, that's the basic mechanics of the basic part of the game's gameplay as such. The other part of the puzzle game, uh, which is pretty hard to miss because it takes up about half the screen, is the character there that you see, and that character, for reasons, loses their clothes as the puzzle goes on. Basically what happens is, as you make icons disappear and you rack up combos, uh, your score goes, score goes up, and as the score goes up, once it hits certain levels, the character will remove part of their clothing, they'll strip down. Narratively speaking, it's... I guess it's a way of visually representing you kind of digging down into the truth of a person. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing that they can hide behind any longer when they're just about naked. But um, mostly it's there for fan service. And I think that's pretty obvious to anybody that plays the game for even a couple of minutes. It's there as a bit of silliness, a bit of entertaining fan service. The good news or the, the good side of things, I guess, is that there are both male and female characters, so it's not purely objectification of women and all that kind of stuff um, there's boys in there too and they get stripped down just as far <laughs> so it's not like dead or alive where there are male characters and yet they're not nearly as sexy as the women are but um, there's no nudity in this game it has to I, I should make that clear this is not a porn game this isn't you know honey pop where you can actually get the characters right down to the nuds um, they get stripped down to their underwear and then once you get the next level up that's it you've cleared the game they have a funny reaction which is orgasmic <laughs> uh, and then they uh, the game shifts back to the vision novel section because you've cleared it you've managed to get them to reveal the truth about themselves and they're about to spill their guts to you in the visual novel so yeah it pushes up against the boundaries without breaking them it's not something that um, Sony was ever going to uh, censor for anybody that wants to use that term for it. Um, it. That was never part of it. It's it's done because it's entertaining and silly. It's not meant to be sexy or erotic or pornographic or anything. So, yeah. 
The fan service side of things is actually where the game gets most of its replay value as well. So once you've beaten a character in the story mode once and you've unlocked them, they then appear in the fantasize mode of the main menu. And in the fantasize mode, you've got just the puzzle board. There's no story around it. You've got just the puzzle board and a time challenge as such. It's not a time limit. It's more just a goal to try and clear the puzzle board as fast as possible. That's more a high score thing um, to kind of show how quickly you can strip these characters down to their underwear. Um, but each character, you can you can pick any of the characters you like. Uh, the puzzle board remains the same, but you can pick whatever character is your favorite. And each character has four different sets of underwear, which you can unlock. They'll start with just the one. You complete the puzzle board once, they'll unlock the second one. And then there are conditions to unlock the third and fourth. And that underwear is, well, it's pretty pretty fashionable, I have to say. <laughs> These characters have pretty good taste in their panties. Um, it, it's all very colorful. And again, it's silly nonsense. It's not too erotic as such. But each time you unlock that set of underwear for your favorite character, it is quite amusing to go through the puzzle again to see what uh, that new set of underwear looks like, because they are quite different. And yeah, that's where most of the game's replay value goes. Because there's no online leaderboards, there's no uh, endless mode, there's none of that. There's no time limits. There's, there's none of that to really add challenge to the puzzle board. It's really only... You'll only play it through a couple of times once, I guess, once each time to see the, the new sets of underwear that you unlock. But yeah, replay value is a bit of an issue with Kotodama. Uh, it would have done, I think, with an endless mode. That would have helped. Uh, or some kind of leaderboard, at least to, to share your top speeds, because it doesn't even have that. It just registers the top score you've got. And there's only two difficulties in that bonus mode as well. There's just normal and hard so it is a little bit limited on that angle and that's a little bit disappointing um, because once you finish the visual novel itself it's an enjoyable visual novel don't get me wrong it's actually a really entertaining one but it doesn't have that kind of depth that you'll want to dig into it a second or third time it's not like steins gate where i can play steins gate over and over again and each time take something new away from it this one's a much more shallow on the surface it's for entertainment and laughs kind of game which is fine it again i'm not criticizing it for that but I feel like the whole package is a little bit limited as a uh, work, I guess, as a result. But overall, P-Cube has done an absolutely stellar job with their first development project. Kotodama gets absolutely everything right that it needed to get right. The art is great. The characters are great. The puzzle works well. It's limited, yes, but every all the components come together in a way that's really enjoyable to play through and really entertaining. And I had a really good time with Kotodama. I really recommend it. I hope it was a. I hope it is a success for PQ because I think there's a lot of room there for them to keep building on it in future editions. And I um I wholeheartedly recommend it. So I'm going to have a review of this up on digitallydownloaded.net as well today. I don't know exactly when. I don't know if it'll be at the same time that the video goes live or not. But either way, just keep clicking back on the site until you see it and have a read. Uh, if you enjoy this video and if you enjoy my videos in general, please do consider backing me on Patreon. I hate asking for these things because it feels like I'm selling my soul a bit. But it really does help. Um, firstly, it makes me feel good <laughs> to know that people enjoy my videos. Secondly, every dollar per month that you can contribute really helps me to continue to make these and to look for new ways to build on them. I've got plenty of great ideas. I just need the money to make it happen. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you do get a chance to give Kotodama a go. And if you do, I hope you do enjoy it. Do let me know who your favorite girl or boy is in the comments. I'm not going to tell you mine. You have to guess. And uh, we will see you at the next video. Oh.